Hey guys, work continues on the Brunswick. If you recall, I took the time and effort to unmount the big filter choke. And I've got that pretty well cleaned up and primer all over it now. And uh, I then uh, noticed that the tabs on the filter capacitor as an audio output transformer seemed like they would bend over fairly easily and that turned out to be the case so I popped this out as well and I was curious so I pried up the cardboard cover and here's what you get inside uh, it's basically a giant block of wax and I can see the vague outlines of what must be the output transformer and the capacitors must be embedded down in there I think I misspoke earlier when I said that this box contained the audio output transformer. Actually that's in a box on the tuner chassis. This box contains three filter caps and a filter choke. So uh, I'm actually not really concerned about breaking anything by melting the insides out. Also these, uh, the inside is potted up with uh, actually what seems to be a fairly low temp wax, it might just be beeswax. So it's not like melting out one of those horrible big tar blocks. This is actually quite easy to melt out. So I've already started a little bit and I'm going to keep going. And ideally the insides will slide out. I can recover the filter choke, discard the old caps and put new caps inside and then refill it with something. Maybe beeswax or maybe uh, I'll just pack it up with some type of material so it can be easily accessible down the road if need be. I'm just using a heat gun on low to melt it out. And I've got to tip it a bit of an angle so it runs out easily. I've melted out enough of the wax now that I can see the structure pretty clearly. We've got these jelly rolls here, one, two, and then smaller third one in here. Those are the capacitors. And this is the filter choke. And that's what these two wires are going here and down here. So ideally what I want to do is leave this pack alone and get these out so I think the next step is to remove this structure I'll unsolder these two wires and then I can just uh, carefully remove this because I'd like to reuse it because these are the solder lugs for the wires and uh, if I can pull these three out I'll mount my three new caps down in here reattach this plate attach my cap leads to it and uh, reattach these leads and hopefully this whole right side I won't uh, dislodge it or disrupt it at all I carefully removed the lug plate and then started heating this side and drained out as much of the wax as I could and then I plunged a corkscrew into one of the capacitor sections and gradually was able to extricate it. So the rest should come out fairly easily now. Basically it's like wax paper and aluminum foil. Just roll up. <laughs> Let's just keep pulling this out until there's none left. With that first capacitor removed, the next two sections just fell right out, no problem. So, here are my new caps. A couple 1 microfarads and a .47. Here's the diagram of how they get wired. 
And here's a plate, so I will remount this. And uh, well, actually, I'll attach the capacitors first to it first, and then get them situated right so that they fit down in that hollow there on the left. And then I'll get this mounted back and finally hook up the choke, which I did just check again, and the resistance still measures good. I cleaned all the remains of the old caps off of this frame and hooked up some new caps using this diagram as a guide. So there's 0.47 cap and two 1 microfarad caps with a common center lug there. Now all that's left is to fit it down into here and then hook the choke back up. One wire goes up here, and one wire goes down here. And then this plate covers it all up, and I'll need to crimp back down these little tabs that hold this on. I just finished melting some fresh wax onto the choke side, which is holding everything nice and firm. So I think I can go ahead and put on the bottom plate and bend these tabs back over. And finally here it is all back together. And all that's left is to do a bit of sanding and then I can put on the final coat of brown paint. And I've also made some decent progress on the chassis so pretty soon I think the power supply side of this radio will be complete. Tubes. If you recall, I had tested these earlier and found that some of the 26s weren't so hot. In particular, one had a short and one was uh, in the yellow zone on the tester, like right in the middle between good and bad. And the other two 26s were okay. The 71 was bad and the Type 80 was good. Well, been shopping around a bit and turns out the Type 26s are a little more expensive and scarcer than I realized. So I went hunting through my stash and after going through box after box of tubes I found one. So in all my tubes I only have one Type 26. But it's a pretty nice one. It's an uh, actual Radiotron UX226. I imagine when this radio was new it would have come with a whole nice set of these. And this tube tests like new, in fact, I, I think it may very well be new old stock. So uh, that can replace the one that's shorted, and then the one that's marginal, and the two that are good, hopefully between those four, uh, that'll be enough to get some sound out of this set. Now, as for the bad Type 71, well, I do have one good 71A, so I can definitely use that. And I have uh, the one that came with the set, the tested bad. And I had one from a while ago that has been hanging on to for whatever reason that's bad. And by bad, I mean that both of these, they have no filament. They're open. But I figured before I completely give up on them, what the heck, I might as well try touching up the solder joints. See, the way these tubes are manufactured, you get the glass envelope. Then there's some wires that come out through the glass. Then they feed into these pins, which are then filled with solder. So what I did on this one is I just got my soldering iron heated up and just touched up the ends a little bit. Fell a little bit of fresh solder in there. And what do you know, this tube tests like new now. Nice filament glow. So I was a little <laughs> shocked to see that. And that, that's not the one that came with this radio. That would be this guy. Well, I went to heat up the pins on this one and nothing was happening. And upon closer inspection, these pins are not open at the end. I've never seen that before. All the tubes I've ever messed around with, these were just cylinders 
and the solder gets fed through the end up inside the tube here and makes contact with the wire coming out of the glass envelope. So I thought, okay, well these just must be the end, must be more like they're cups and they must have solder that was filled in from the other side and then heated up. Um, so I tried touching up my soldering iron to the tips here just to like maybe try to remelt the solder that I presume is inside of these. Didn't have any effect. And I figured what the heck, I might as well investigate further and I noticed that the base was a little bit loose. So I wiggled it and it actually came right off. So these wires definitely were not making good contact with those pins. Let's see if we look down inside there. Yeah, I don't know. I can't imagine they were just friction fit though. Um, but at any rate, I then took this and put my ohm meter across the filament pins and what do you know, I got continuity. So this may very well be a good tube. I just need to get a good base attached to it. So what I'm going to do is file through the ends of these and then glue this back on and feed some solder in from this end to make sure I get good contact with these wires which I will also clean and tin before I put the base back on. So that takes care of the 71A output tube. Still wouldn't mind digging up a couple 26's. So I'll uh, just keep my eye on eBay and uh, eventually maybe one will show up. I tried the same trick on this Type 26 uh, that I got a while ago which was the seller said was bad but I took a chance on it anyways and this one uh, no matter what I done, uh, the filament does seem to be completely burned out on this guy. I filed open the ends of the base pins, reattached the base to the tube with some Permatex, and then soldered the tube wires to the base pins. So, let's give it a try. Alright, we've got filament glow. Now, check for shorts. No shorts. And now, emissions. Alright. I think I just resurrected another tube. Fantastic. So I've now got three good 71A's to use in this radio. I only need one, but uh, it's really nice to have some spares. So now I'm going to go back through and check some of my other globe tubes because I've got I've been hanging on to a bunch that were duds, and uh, who knows, some of these others might uh, might still be good. I'll just have to uh, check the base pins like I did on these. I finished going through my stash of dead tubes and I was able to revive um, about half a dozen including a nice Radiotron UX280 and some Arcturus tubes including a nice 71A Blue Arcturus. That's worth a few bucks. But uh, alas no more Type 26's. So out uh, of the original tubes that came with this radio one type 26 is a dead short, can't fix it. Another one is in the weak to bad range. Two others are good, and I was able to dig up one good one out of my stash, which means I still needed to track down one more good type 26. I was bidding on eBay for a few weeks trying to win some more of the Globe type UX226s. But uh, they kept selling for a bit more money than I wanted to spend. So I finally had to settle on some ST Type 26s. These just arrived in the mail a little while ago. I have not tested them. So I've got my tube tester set up for a Type 26. And let's give these a quick test. Mm. 
the filament is glowing. Let's check for shorts. No shorts. No shorts. And the value. Alright. So all I really needed was just one good one. Let's check the other two quickly. The seller did say that all of these had been tested and tested good. Really, you should wait for a tube to warm up a little bit longer than this, but I don't want you guys to have to wait. Plus, these tubes do heat up pretty quickly. Later tubes, especially tubes designed for series wired sets, have filaments designed to warm up more slowly so they don't blow out when you turn on the set. But these old tubes, some of them do heat up pretty darn quickly. And these only run at 1.4 volts, so a low voltage, higher amperage, they tend to heat up real fast. Alright, the seller wasn't kidding. All three tubes test very good. Alright, so that's it for tubes. I've got a complete set of what I need. I think next up I will start taking a look at the tuner chassis.